Do you have a Honda Navi that the top speed doesn't get any faster no matter what you do? You're hitting that 8,700 RPM rev limit. No matter what, you've done an intake, exhaust, clutch, variator, everything you can, you're just not getting a better top speed. Well, in this episode, episode three of our Honda Navi build series, we're gonna tackle top speed. Well, a portion of top speed. We've got the world's first unrestricted CDI coil combo for the Honda Navi. What does it do, you ask? It removes the rev limit. So stock is an 8,700 RPM rev limit, meaning it cuts spark at 8,700 RPM. This sucker removes that rev limiter. But the cool thing is, it's got a little dial on the bottom here that you can adjust if you don't want it to be unlimited. We've had our Honda Navi up to 10,500 RPMs with no issues, but there is that safety knob there if you would like. If you didn't watch episode one and two, go back and check those out. That's when we tackled acceleration. We installed the Ravino rollers and the Ravino clutch, which made a huge, huge difference in acceleration. The Ravino clutch is actually two and a half pounds lighter than the stock clutch, so it's worth watching. Right before I put the bike on the lift, I did a pull to try to get the numbers so that we can compare once we install our CDI coil combo. So I'm gonna put that clip up here. Um, we use a, a little device called a draggy. These things are pretty cool. They measure your zero to 60, quarter mile, eighth mile, all your times in real time. It's pretty accurate within an eighth of a second. So very, very accurate. So you'll get real numbers so you know exactly what yours is gonna to react to. But I will say something that, that's very, very important that you need to know. We are here in Denver, Colorado, one mile above sea level, where we lose 20% of our power up here. Most people on the planet Earth riding freaking motorcycles, scooters, ATVs are at sea level. That 20% is pretty significant when we're talking small engines. So definitely keep that in mind. Uh, when, you're, when you see me riding, you're gonna be like, mine's faster, it doesn't even have any upgrades. Well, that's why. I'll play this clip, and yes, I was recording with phone in the left hand, flooring with the right hand. Let's do it. Here's the Honda Navi CDI coil combo up close. This, we call this the Honda Navi EVI. So it's a CDI box and a coil in one. So you're gonna remove your CDI box from your factory Honda Navi and your coil. Cool thing is it's 100% plug and play. So you're gonna unplug your original CDI box from your Honda Navi, which has these plugs, and you're gonna use these plugs from the new one to plug those in. No cutting, splicing wires, or anything like that. You remove your stock coil and install this in its place. Very, very easy. I'll show you in depth how to do that. So these units are set up with the Rev Delete active right out of the box. There's no safety. If you feel the need, you can use this little, little screwdriver and the little knob to adjust the little dial. Now, it is kind of a trial and error type thing to get how you want. I recommend uh, a tachometer. We have these on the website. These tacks are really, really cool because they just wrap around. You just take this wire here and you basically wrap this wire around the coil four times and then tape it, and it's kind of a real cheap way of measuring your RPM. We have those on the website, of course, and uh, you'll notice in the video I have, that I'm using this, it's kind of like barely on there, but I, I, see, I just use these for like diagnostic, I don't keep them on there. Battery powered, watch battery, there's no power, so you can use those if you want. Uh, another cool thing, if you're wanting more top speed, you can do a 12 inch rear wheel, if you notice, on your stock Navi, it's a 10 inch rim. So we're, we're gonna dive into that in another episode. That'll, that's kinda like going with higher gearing. So we'll dive into that later. That'll give you a higher top speed as well. But we're also in the works of doing gear up kit, which is actually gonna give your Navi a higher um, gear so you'll have a higher top speed. So this is kinda the first stab at uh, getting a higher top speed out of your Honda Navi. To do the install, nothing fancy. 10 millimeter socket with a ratchet, 12 millimeter socket. Um, you don't have to use a ratchet. You can use an impact if you want, which I'm using. Need a number two screwdriver. I've got it on a gun here. Little, these are, things are cool, gyro. But you don't need that. You can just use a hand, hand screwdriver. 
and then a little flathead if you're trying to adjust the rev limit. It's all you need, very, very easy, simple install. Let's do it. Step one, remove your seat, put the key in, pop the seat off. Next, under the seat, there's a little access to the battery box here. Right here is a number two Phillips head screw. Just unscrew it. Just give the box a little pull. It pulls up from here, pushes out from there. If you have our trickle chargers ran through here, so kind of move it out of the way. Next to the battery is our factory CDI box, the Honda CDI box. There's these little tangs right here. Just push those down and pull. At the same time, there's one. There's another one on the side right here. Push it down. Here's the stock CDI box. You will not need that anymore, but we're gonna use our new CDI box to plug in right here. So keep note of that. Over on the left side of the bike, you'll see the little Navi storage box. We're after this little 10 millimeter bolt right here. There's one on each side. We're gonna hit those. Then on the right side, same thing. This guy right here. And finally, at the top, we've got a 12 millimeter right here. We're just gonna hit that with a 12 millimeter socket. Then you just kind of pull this storage box out. Super, super easy. Sometimes it'll get hung up on this guy. But now the storage box is out of the way. You could cruise it like that if you think it's sweet. It does look kind of weird, doesn't it? Then the final little plate here. You got three screws. One that's kind of hitting right here, Phillips head. One here and one here. So let's get that loosened up. They're all the same length. Nice to have a screwdriver with a magnetic tip. Once you get these three screws removed, it's just a pull down and pull up. Up underneath the cover, there's your ignition coil. There's gonna be two bolts, 10 millimeter bolts. There and there, just need to remove those. Let's go ahead and do that. Keep in mind, we are gonna reuse one of these. The other one, we don't need. On the ignition coil itself, you're gonna see a black with a yellow stripe wire. That unplugs, and then a green wire. It's kinda of hard, just give it a little wiggle. Now you've got the coil disconnected from the harness. Now we gotta get it disconnected from the motor. If you're wondering what to do with these plugs from the old coil, there's gonna be no power going to it. The CDI box is not being used anymore, so you can tape them up if you want, but there's really no need. There's, these are dead wires, so you can just tuck them away, let them hang, whatever. One thing I didn't mention is you're gonna need some needle nose pliers. See that little white clip back there? This is a little difficult to see, but on the other end of your spark plug coil, stock coil, it's gonna look like this. You have a, this is called a spark plug cap. Your spark plug's in the engine, it looks just like this. This guy just goes down and you'll feel it click just like a zip tie. So what we're doing on the inside of that engine is just giving it a pull and a twist, comes off from the spark plug, and then you've got your uh, ignition coil. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off. So I'll give it a little pull, it's a little wiggle. There we go. So here is our stock ignition coil. So as you can see, we've got the stock CDI box out of the Honda Navi. And there's the plugs. Same plugs as the uh, aftermarket CDI coil combo that we're installing, the rolling wrench CDI. And here is our coil, ignition coil. That got plugged in with two wires from the harness. We're not doing anything with the two wires that plugged into that because our CDI box, our CDI coil combo, has one in, included in it. It's a CDI coil combo two in one setup. So if you notice one thing, this is a 45 degree angle that we include. This is our spark plug cap. And the stock one is a 90 degree. You could definitely run this, but it's be routed a little bit different. If you want to remove this guy, you just pull and turn at the same time, just like this. So that's what removes that. There's a little wood screw, like a pointy screw in there that it screws into. Then you would just pull this one off just like this, same way, pull it off, install the new one, just like that. So you don't have to do this, but if you want the same routing as the Honda Navi from the factory, then you can install that. We'll go ahead and install that, but it's definitely not necessary. 
If you're going to have any problems at all with this device, it's normally because you didn't screw this in far enough. These things are absolutely bulletproof. We've ran these units uh, for a long time, over five years, in the Honda Ruckus, the GY6, uh, multiple different models. Of course, this has got different uh, software and different chip in it. This is a microprocessor. Um, but very, very reliable. Made in Taiwan, not China. So let's, let's install this sucker. New CDI box is going to go up on the left hanger of where the old coil was mounted. Use your 10 millimeter screw that, or bolt that came from the original coil. Best thing to do is pop it, pop it through like that and hold it. And then you can get a little, get it started. And you can grab your, a 10 millimeter socket and start screwing it in by hand. before you actually tighten it down. I normally keep it all loose for now until we get everything routed. All right, next we've got our spark plug wire. Now this is gonna be kind of up to you on how you wanna route it. And I won't be able to show you on camera, it's too tight um, where, where this plugs in, but you'll know where it plugs in because you pulled your old one off. Putting this in the same spot as it came out stock. Now you can do some zip ties, make sure it's not touching anything hot, but just give it a little press, you'll hear it click, kind of like a zip tie, and that's installed. And the final step is to plug these into where your stock coil was, here. Now you can remove panels if you want, but it's completely unnecessary. There is a spot right through here that you can see light through. See that little kind of see through there? I'm just gonna fish the wires up through there. And if, if it's too difficult for you, you can use a coat hanger, pull that through. Um, it's not that hard. Okay, so I'm fishing up through right here. Definitely not that difficult. Might take you a few tries. Okay, there's one. There it is. Now I'm gonna follow the original route right here. Now I just uh, plug these plugs in. Just match up the little pin. Make sure the pins don't bend over. It's not force, a lot of force. So there's that. Just make sure that this wire is tucked. Okay, and then, and then you can just install this guy. There's little two little tangs up top here. It's a push in and then push down. There's, there's some pins down here you can't see very well. But once you get those lined up, it'll kind of push down. And then your little number two screw. That's done, you're ready to put the seat on. So push forward and then, a, there you go. Okay, last step is to tighten this 10 millimeter down. You notice it was really loose. I like to push it over as far as it can go. Well, within reason, because you don't want the wire to be rubbing on this metal thing. So I'm just gonna hit it. There we go. Zip tie this stuff out of the way. Make sure it's not gonna vibrate back and forth on a metal piece. So we're all done underneath there. Then you reverse your steps. This, come, this pops in first at the bottom. These right here will not pop in. You're gonna have to wait till the last minute. I'll show you the last step. I'll show you how that's done. Screw there. Screw there. And this one's a little dark and hard to see up here, but that's in. And then if you notice right here, there's a crack. And you'll, you'll push and push, it'll never go in. So you really have to put your hand behind it and give it some support and then push and then it goes in. Do the same thing on the other side. And then finally, a little box over on my side, which you can't see, 12 millimeter, 10 millimeter. We're just reversing our steps is all. That side, 10 on that side, and then that 10. Let's try this freaking thing out. So we're gonna do the same route that we always do in our in episode one, episode two, that same route, so we have a comparison. But then the next video that we'll do is we'll go to the highest freaking point in this area, and we're gonna go balls to the wall down the hill to see how high we can get the RPMs up. Keep in mind, the performance on this sucker is not maxed out at all. We're only in stage one of our performance upgrades out of three episodes. We've got, we're gonna go up to probably stage four. I'm excited for this one.
Well, I'm waiting for traffic to uh, clear out. I'm just trying to do a top speed run. Stock Revlin it was 8700 ish. So there it is, I'm proud of that one. The world's first CDI coil combo with Rev Delete for the Honda freaking Navi. If you want one of these suckers, I'll put a link down in the description. I appreciate you guys more than you know, and I'll see you in the next video.